Hi there, this is Phil with PhilFX and we're on do part 6 now on our iPod Nano tutorial. Where we left off last time is we had finished the body, we put the glass face on it, we put the thumb wheel switch on the front, and uh, now what we want to do is we want to put that top uh, switch uh, on there. And what we're, how we're going to do this is we're going to create a separate mesh that essentially is this top plate. We'll cut a hole in that and we'll model the uh, switch and put that in there and the trickiest part is going to be cutting this oval kind of hole in our top plate. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I've done is this photograph is actually a little more detailed than the one I had for a reference picture before and so I wanted to use this as a uh, reference picture. So if we go in and uh, look at my top photo you can see I've cropped that in Photoshop and I've placed it and uh, it's now part of my reference images that I'm using to model towards and it's fairly close all right uh, granted this is a perspective photograph so it's not going to show everything exactly correct uh, it's a little tough to see here with some of the uh, lines that are in there but this uh, circular switch is actually not on the vertical center it's a little bit pushed towards the top because this is a bit of a uh, perspective photograph it's not exactly end on but what I was most interested in was getting the overall outside dimensions correct so that's here and here and understanding where the inside dimensions need to be with the plate that's here and the plate that's here so I'm most interested in you know the boundary edges and the boundary edges uh, look pretty good and I can get these dimensions close enough for what we're doing again this is uh, not CAD we're doing an artistic representation of this nano so this should work fine so the way I'm going to build this is the way that we built the original nano body is I'm going to create a pipe and then we'll uh, shrink it and modify it so it uh, fits correctly. So let me get this out of the way. Do a control H and hide that. And let's get ourselves a pipe here and uh, go down to the parameters on the poly pipe. And 20 subdivisions is fine. Uh, I want to take and uh, we're going to want to scale this so take this hit R scale this down just a little bit it's a little bit better if we can see it from this and I need to uh, thin it out so what we had before was about I believe 0.8 on the radius and about 0.1 on the thickness that looks about right and I want to take and stretch this out. All right, and I want to. What I want to do is I'm going to stretch this out so it goes just a little bit to the edges, and you can see where that's going right there. And I need to compress this in just a little bit. All right, and that looks about right for what I need. Spin this around. And delete that. And then I want to go ahead and join the faces. Uh, so I don't take up time on the uh, Tutorial for that, I'll just do one. If you remember, I go in and I click on an edge, and I click on an adjacent edge, I get my tools up here, and I just hit bridge, and I bridge that, all right? And so that's how I go ahead and make that. So let me uh, pause this, and we'll come back, and I'll have this all done. So I'm back, and uh, I finished making this bottom plate, and you can see what it looks like. I basically went in, and I straightened out some of the edges, and I put a top and a bottom on it. And if we look at this at the uh, top view, we can see how that lines up. And it lines up pretty good by taking, uh, smooth it out. You can see I've got a pretty good alignment to the boundaries of how this all works. All right. So now we need to put this switch in. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to here. And the, the way to do this is the same way that we put the uh, thumb wheel switch on is we want to use an outline 
All right, and we want to build an outline face that we can then use the conform tool to push that onto here. And uh, the best way to do that again is we uh, we use one of our favorite shapes for that and that's our uh, uh, pipe shape so let me go in and i'm going to hide this again you want 12 in there that's it and i want this radius shrunk down now the thing that we want to do, remember, is uh, I want to take this and I want the outside edge, or excuse me, I want the inside edge is going to be where we cut, all right? So let me move this over, okay? And I want to shrink that inside edge to what we cut, and the outside edge we don't want to exceed bigger than that. So if I go over here and I take the radius, let's take a look at, uh, say, 0.8 and the thickness around 0.1. Okay, we're getting closer. And uh, R, shrink that down. Let's scale this up a little more so we can see that better. And so, like I said, because this is a perspective picture, we're not going to have it so it lines up perfect, all right? So I want the picture to be cut in a little bit to the inside and a little, be on, a little bit on the outside. So we're getting close, all right? And I think that looks about right, all right? And so then if we go back to here, see, I can shrink this down because it obviously doesn't need to be that thick. And what we're going to want, if you look at this, we're going to want... Uh, one pipe to give us this curve and then we actually want a second pipe to give us that curve and that what we'd like to do is tie the two pipes together. That's exactly how I built this shape. So I go in here and uh, take a move tool off and I want to duplicate this. So I'll go in and do a, a Command D or a Control D if you're on a Windows machine and I have the second pipe and you can see I'm going to take that and move that right here. So I have the two pipes and then what I want to do is go in here and go into face mode and let me see where my select is. I have I want camera based off and I don't want symmetrical selections. So I go in and I select those faces and I delete them. I go in this guy, go into face mode camera base is off, select those faces, and I delete them. And now, if you remember, the only thing I'm really interested in is just this very top face. I really don't need the rest of this body. But we do want to tie these two together. So I'm going to take, let's go into object mode, and I'll select this object, shift select that object, and I want to combine those so they're one mesh. So we hit combine, uh, go into edge mode, I'll click this top edge, Go over here and click that top edge. Get my tool over here and I'll bridge that. Click this top edge, click that top edge. Go over here and I'll bridge that. And now I can go in and go into face mode. And I can select all of these faces and delete them. And that's it. That's what I want. So that's what we're going to use to uh, cut our hole into our surface. All right. So I now have the shape that I'm looking for. And I can take this and we'll raise that up. And let me get my outliner. And we'll take our bottom plate and show that again. So there's my bottom plate. And... So there's my pipe on top. Now you can see in my outliner, I have some of these other pieces. These were the two pipes that I made. Then I combined everything. So what I really want to do to get rid of this stuff, uh, 
that's not needed and not necessary anymore. You really want to take this shape, and it's called deleting the history. And the history is just everything you went through to make this. And you can see over here, if I go to this poly pipe, well, here's all the steps that I did to make this, all right? And so if I go up here and say edit, delete, delete by type, and delete history, there I have got rid of those extra ex extemporaneous uh, things in my outline that aren't needed and uh, all of the uh, uh, things that were on the pipe history are now gone. So we've cleaned that up. And so now all I need to do is I want to take the object that I'm going to place it on, remember, and we make that live. And then I take the object we want to uh, connect and I uh, go up to mesh and I say conform and that puts it right on the top. Alright, so now we can see that it's on the top there and the next thing we'll have to do is we're going to have to add some edge loops so we can uh, make this work. So let's go ahead and we'll go into this mode and I want to uh, see the all of my edge loops and Actually, what I want to do is turn the background off. So let's go into my channel box and turn my reference images off. And now I can see this object. I need to make it not live anymore. That's why I can't select it. So now I can see this. I can make it not live. All right, so what we do is we put things in here. And the things I'm going to put on this side, I'm going to want to put on the other side. That way we make the edit symmetrical. So I need to go into my selection tool and I don't want camera based selection but I do want symmetry and I want symmetry in the X. So we'll put symmetry in the X. So symmetry in the object and on X is now turned on. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to take this edge and I want to move that. Alright, so let's zoom in. I use my W command. W key, we're going to move that. I'm going to move it to right there. All right now, uh, let me drop that. We're going to want to insert some edge loops. So I get my insert edge loop tool, and I want to put an edge loop there. I want to put another edge loop right there. Put a third edge loop right there. I want an edge loop there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, where I'm looking is I'm looking right around here. Okay. So those are where I wanted my edge loops. Now, this point right here is not symmetrical to that point there. The uh, vertex ends up being just a little bit above it, as you can see. That's not a problem at the moment. We're going to fix that and when we move everything around. And so I'm just going to go ahead and let that go. Uh, if I drop the tool and we scale this back, you can see uh, I accomplished what I wanted by using symmetry, so everything I did on the left is the same as everything on the right. And so now we have this all symmetrical, so any smoothing that happens, we're going to have symmetrical smoothing uh, on our whole plate, and that's going to work out great for us. So we back up to the top here, and uh, we go back into object mode. So now what we're going to want to do is we will want to take and uh, combine those two meshes, right? So I have my mesh that I built that's going to be the definition of where that hole is going to be. And I have our bottom plate, or it's really going to be the top plate. The two, the bottom and the top are the same. So uh, just disregard that I've named it bottom plate, but uh, it's they're one and the same. So I click on that and I do a command click for pipe and so I have the two selected and we want those to be a common mesh so I go into mesh and I say combine and now those are combined together alright then I want to go in and I want to go into face mode and I want to delete the faces that aren't necessary alright and We go in and delete all of these faces, and now I have this hole. Okay, so we've uh, deleted the faces we don't need. Uh, 
let me just double check and make sure with you that you had your settings correct. You wanted to have camera based selection on when you deleted those faces. Make sure you had symmetry turned off. If you didn't have symmetry, symmetry turned off, you may have deleted faces down here. And so if you did that, just go ahead and hit undo, command Z or control Z, and your undo will put all those faces back and then uh, you'll be good to go. Then, good, then go back and uh, make sure you have, again, uh, symmetry turned off for the next operation because what we're going to do is we're going to move the vertices. So when we move the vertices, if you remember, we want to go in and use our modeling tool and we can do that very quickly with our target weld tool. So I go in and uh, I'm going to grab a verts on the inside of the iPod body and we're going to move those to this outside ring of the defined loop. Now remember, uh, we don't want to move any of the vertices of this loop. The, the loop is the location of those vertices is very important and they need to stay in place so that nice uh, oval will get uh, cut into our final design. So grab this one here and we move that up there. We're just going to go around this outside perimeter and move all of these. Uh, let me zoom in so we can be sure what we're doing here. So this is the vertice that's the iPod body. This is the vert that's part of that loop. We don't want to touch that one. So take this one, move that there. This one moves to there. Uh, make sure we get the correct one here. So it's this outside one goes up there. And here it is the... Uh, Zoom in real quick. This vertice right here is part of that oval. We don't want to move that. This is the one we want to move. So we take that and we move that to there. Okay. This one goes to there. Uh, this is tight in here. So actually, so this is an interesting case. If your uh, location worked out such that you have things outside, you can see right now that I have a vertice that's inside. So I want to take this vertice and I want to move it out to here, but I have this vertice that's inside. So let's move that real quick. So I'm going to select, go in here and hit select. And yeah, that's the one right in the center. So I'm going to select this vertice. I hit my W key to move it. And I'm just going to move this slightly and pull it up. That's not going to hurt anything, but it's going to get it out of the way so we keep a quad right there. So let me go back. Now go back to my target weld tool. We grab this vertice and I move it right up to there. And note we have a quad there, so everything's fine. All right. So I take this one, I move that to there. Let's zoom in here, make sure we get the right one. Okay, this vertice is part of the oval. That one's part of the iPod body. We take that one, we move it there. Uh, same thing here. Let's make sure we get the right one. That's the vertice that's the oval, right? See that? That's the pair. So this is the one we want to move. We move that one to there. Take that one, we move it to there. Take this one, we move it to there. And now if we zoom out, okay, so we have successfully moved all of those vertices. We took care of a slight problem that uh, would have been a headache, but at the moment it should be fine. Shouldn't cause any issues. And uh, so now we're ready to uh, bridge and make this new face on the inside. So I need to drop the target weld tool. Let's go up and hit select. Uh, just to be sure, let's double check. Okay, I got camera selection and yes, symmetry is off. So now I want to select edges. So I want to select this edge and I want to go over here and select this edge. And I want to bridge between these two. And I can just hit the bridge tool. Let's double check, make sure what are the settings on my bridge tool. So let's hit the option box. And in fact, yes, my divisions are zero. That's what I want. So I can just go ahead and hit bridge. I click this. And I shift select, click that edge, say bridge it. Select this one, shift select that, say bridge. Click this one, shift select, say bridge. And now I have two quads, so I can double click this one, hold down shift, double click that, and I can just go up here to mesh and say fill the hole. And so that will fill the hole. So now we go into faces, I select my faces going across, and we're just going to go ahead and extrude this down. Alright, so extrude and push down, I have the faces selected, click my extrude tool, 
push down just a little bit. Now I'm just going to push down just a little bit because I want an edge loop right at that top. That's going to help us hold a nice edge. So I hit my G key, doing another extrude. I'm going to push that down just a little bit. G key again, another extrude. I push it down. Now again, like I did at the top, I want another edge loop very close together at the bottom edge. So I hit G, extrude again, go down. And if I just wanted to leave it, I could just stop right now, but I actually want to take the faces and pull them in and create an edge loop around the bottom, the outside ring of the bottom. So to do that, I hit G again. And now this extrusion is going to be a scale. So I hit the scale box and I get this purple one, which is for my X and Z. So see this, here's X and here's Z. So in the purple, this box right here will let me scale on X and Z. And so I scale it and you can see I'm pulling it in just a little bit. So I'm pulling that in and that gives me an edge loop just at the bottom. So now I'm done with extruding. So let's hit the select tool, drop the extrude. We can see the uh, indentation that I've made. And uh, let's go back into object mode, select this and hit three for smoothing. And look how nice that came out. So I have a very nice uh, indentation and uh, looks really good. It's nice and tight. Uh, so that should work out very, very well. All right. So then the next thing we need to do is we want to see how this actually fits with the top and of the iPod and we want to put our button in. So those are the last two things we need to do. And, uh, and I have iPod body hid, so let me do a shift H on that and show it. And this plate here is this bottom plate too. What I want to do is actually delete the history and everything that's associated with it because I'm happy with how it looks. So I want to go up and uh, go to edit, delete by type history. So I do that and let me rename that, call this top plate edit right now. So we have our iPod body and we hit the W key and I want to just pull this up. So let's take a look at this and see how this fits. So first off, I want to get it so it's just at the top. So the way to do that is we go in here and we look at its positioning. And I want this top when it's smooth to be just at the top of the iPod body. And so if I take the iPod body, I probably should uh, smooth that too, just so I can see how things move. Go back and get that. We'll zoom in and uh, take this and I can move this down and again this is we're not doing CAD here we just want to make this so it looks good and so there's a couple things that we uh, we need to edit here real quick first off you can see that the uh, this oval that I made is actually pushing down in and if we looked at it from a uh, side view which is what we have here we go into uh, wireframe mode so we can zoom in. We can see that uh, this is actually pushing into the indentation that I made for the glass and everything else. And while that may not cause an issue, it could. All right. And because it could cause an issue, uh, the best way to do that is uh, it's not necessary that it needs to push down that far. So what I want to do is to bring these bottom uh, parts up and I could do this with a scale but if I scale it it's going to scale everything so it means it's gonna uh, scale my indentation that I made and I don't want to do that all right so what I want to do is let's go in this mode where I'm looking at it from the side because this is a great view I can see where things are and let me hit the one key because I don't want that smooth and I want to select vertices, so we want to look at vertices, and I want to make sure that camera selection is off, okay? I don't want camera selection on. I want to be able to select all the vertices. So I'm going to take and turn that off. Again, double check. Let's make sure symmetry is not turned on. Nope, symmetry is off. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take a selection window and I'm going to grab those vertices, hit my W key, and I'm just going to pull those up. I'm going to slide those up here and grab those, and I'm going to slide those up here. And I kind of grab all those in the bottom, and I'm going to slide all of those up. Okay, so now I've shortened it, and I've taken this outside the length of the cut that I made for my window. All right. And the other thing you can see is right now, uh, this is pushing in through the indentation that we had for our top. So we probably would like to fix that also. So let me even zoom in here even more and make a few more adjustments. I'm going to take these and pull these up like that. Take this one, pull this up like that. Take these and I'm going to pull these up here just like that. So this is now inside. Okay, it's completely inside of the indentation. So none of my shapes are going to push into the other one. And let's check this for smoothing. So I'll go into object mode, get out of this component mode. Oh, why is it doing this to me? All right. There we go. Get back into here. We see this in object mode. There we go. And let me smooth that. And if it's smooth, we can see this fits nice inside. So this is the bottom face of the indentation I made on the top of my iPad. What I'm looking for is I want to make sure that this doesn't push through that. Because if it did, uh, I could get issues with uh, light leaking, which is one of the things we talked about. So what's the other adjustment I have to make? Well, let's see how this fit looks like. And the fit is not bad, but it could use some adjusting, okay? So you can see here we have some adjusting where I've got a, a gap there, and then actually I'm overlapping here, all right? And so we can fix that by going in essentially and just uh, moving vertices, all right? So we can uh, grab some vertices and we can uh, push them around and we can make this so this works out much better. So let me go in and we'll uh, deselect that. I'm going to vertex mode and I want to unsmooth this shape actually. So let me, actually I want to unsmooth both of them. So that one's unsmoothed and let me select my iPod body, unsmooth that. Okay, so we're looking at a top view. Let's go at a top view here. And we can see both of these. All right, and things are unsmoothed. And so we're gonna wanna go in and uh, work on vertices. So uh, let me do the center first. And we will want to have symmetry on. So let me go in and I don't want camera based selection because I wanna get all the vertices but I do want symmetry, so we're going to we're turn on symmetry in the X direction. So we'll go into vertex mode, and I select these vertices. And because symmetry is now set for X, okay, but this is in the center, it's not grabbing anything else. We can see that, all right? But I actually do want to get these bottom ones, because what I do to the top, I want to do the bottom. So. I select those vertices, I shift select those vertices, and I want to scale this out because I want to pull this apart just a little bit. So I'm going to pull that apart just like that. Then I select those, and you can see because we have symmetry, I get those. Hold on my shift key, take that, and I want to pull these apart. All right, go down here, I want to select those, shift select those. I want to pull those apart just a little bit. Select those, shift select those, pull those apart just a little bit. Now here's where it gets tricky because actually I want to start pulling things in just a little bit. All right. And I need to be very careful because I don't want to move any of these vertices with my oval. And I can get away with this. So I'm going to select these up here and hold down shift key and select these there. And I'm going to scale these in really close. All right. 
those, shift select those. Scale was in really close. And shift select those, shift, nope. Select those, shift select those. And actually I want to take those and I'm gonna move them. So I'm gonna pull those back just a little bit. Hit my R key, scale those in just a little, okay? Select those, those, hit W. I'm gonna pull those back just a little bit. Hit R and scale those, select that. Shift select that. W, maybe pull that back just a touch. And take those, pull that back just a touch. Okay, so let's see how this looks. And let me smooth that. So that's what that looks like, smooth. Let me take this one and smooth it and see how we fit. That actually looks like it's maybe not too bad. So if we go in here, and that looks pretty good. All right, you can work this a little bit more. Obviously, there's some improvement that could be made there, but uh, for what we're doing and for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, let's go with that. And so the very last thing we need to do is just put in our on-off button, all right? And uh, finally, the on-off button is gonna be very simple to do. All we need to do is uh, we're finally gonna just use a, a cylinder, polygon cylinder. So I'll click on that. We created a polygon cylinder. Let me take a look at my parameters. What have I got? Uh, 20 is fine. The sizing, I'm sure, is all wrong. But uh, let me bring him up here. And uh, so we can pull this in. And hit R to scale it. Uh, actually, before I scale it and everything else, uh, we are going to want some smoothing on here, so it's a good thing to, we want to put in some edge loops. So let's go ahead and put the edge loops right off the top. We're going to want some on the cap. I'm going to put in uh, four. So we have edge loops on the caps that's on the top and bottom. If I want to, I can move these edges out. I probably will want to do that. Uh, for the uh, subdivision height, uh, I'm, that's this direction. Uh, we need at least one, probably four. So I'm going to put four in for that. All right, so that gives me one in the middle and a loop here that I can pull up and a loop there that I can pull down, which is, I know is what I'm going to want to do. So we have that. So we select this guy, hit R. Let's start scaling him down. He's way too tall, so we're going to shrink him down like this. And then hit W, move him up. And let's look at our top view. And I can turn my reference images back on. And we'll slide him over like that. And the R key so I could scale. So I can scale him down. And we'll put him just about like that. That looks pretty good. And uh, hit my W key and move him down and he actually sits above just a little bit in fact if we look at this look at this right here you can see how much he is actually sitting above that so what i may want to do even is scale that so it's just a little bit taller we can do that and i'll scale him up So he's a little bit taller and I think that should probably work. And so then the last thing, if I go in and let me drop the tool, I'll select this. If I smooth it, no, that's not what I want to take. If I smooth him, he's a little bit too rounded. Okay, we can fix that. You can just leave it as a hard edge, but you'd like it to be rounder. So you probably would like to uh, Go and smooth that out a little bit. Let me double check my selection. Turn symmetry off. I don't want symmetry on. I want camera base selection. And I can take and go into edge mode. And let me take this edge and we go up to our edit mesh tools 
and I'm looking for the, the spin edge. Where's my slide edge? Slide edge, that's it. So I slide my edge, I drag with my middle mouse button, and I can slide that edge out to the edge there. And I'll double click this guy, same kind of thing. I slide that edge, so I slide him up. And go in and drop the tool. Go into object mode, take that, hit three. And that looks pretty doggone good. All right, so we got a nice button on the top. All right, we've made the top section and uh, all this works out pretty good so hopefully this will help you out you'll get your top part built uh, i'll probably do some tutorials later on the the bottom but it's not going to be required for class yeah, but i just want to end the modeling with putting this top plate and the switch in here so hopefully this uh, helps everybody out and yeah, this has been phil with phil effects thanks a lot